<laughs> this is a preface to any self-defense or disarm or whatever kind of techniques that we put up on the internet. We get a lot of criticism very often about how a self-defense technique won't work because the, the other person, the attacker, could do this or that. Or in the case that they have a gun, they could shoot you, which is absolutely correct, actually. Uh, combat should be a very last option when everything, every other way of getting out of the situation has been exhausted. When you have no other alternative, that's when you go to a pistol disarm, a knife disarm, a uh, self-defense technique, whatever. And yes, the other person could come back with something that could counterattack. That's the nature of combat. However, we have the philosophy that it's better to have options and be able to do something rather than to just stand there and get shot, stabbed, attacked, or whatever, and do nothing. That being said, enjoy the self-defense videos. So for any, uh, for any wrist grab, let's go over closer to the camera. Regardless of how strong my grip is, there's a point here where the atoms don't touch. The atoms are not connected. There's airspace, regardless of how small. She's not going to get through here. She's not going to get through here or here, obviously. This is the weak link in the grip. Also, we have the radius and the ulna. If she can line those two bones up, it can slip out much easier than if she tries to pull this way, where the thumb has her radius, the fingers have her ulna. So, in any wrist escape, you try to line the radius and the ulna up with the inside, up with the, where the grip meets. So for a cross grab, she can not only line them up, she can also punch this way, which breaks the grip. Let's do that in slow motion. So she's coming up. Now her bones are aligned. Now she's pulling out. One more time. You can just punch straight this way. Exactly. Very effective escape technique. If it's the other hand, the anatomy works slightly differently because the, the grip this time is on the front of her wrist rather than on the back of her wrist, rather the opening is on the front rather than the back. Then it's really easy. If you follow your thumb, that's where your radius is. So she follows her thumb right between where the finger and the thumb meet, and you snatch right out of there. With any self-defense technique or any escape technique like this, you have to consider that the person grabbing you has got at least a little bit of an aggressive tendency. Therefore, you can't just escape and just stand there. You want to escape and then assume a defensive posture or run, get away, or something. So at runtime, when you're practicing these, make sure you finish strong. Finish with a, a fighting stance or an escape or whatever. So now Ashley will show us that. Let's back over here so they can see. With a throat grab, it's very common to, uh, uh, you see the martial arts thing where you come up between the arms and break out, which is just fine. Uh, those, that technique works. However, another one that we often use that's really easy to remember is to simply raise both hands and turn. Let's get a little closer so they can see. So if my hands are on her throat, she simply raises both hands outside my wrist, and then when she turns, go slow motion, go the other way so they can see. Look what happens to my wrist. Here I have no strength. Here she's bending it backwards and she can get away. That sets her up for a nice elbow here if she wants to come back. However, whenever you strike somebody or hit somebody, you've opened a new can of worms. Now you haven't just gotten away. You've also hit them. So uh, you might want to consider that when you're doing your self-defense techniques. Again, like with any other technique, you don't just get away and stand there. You get away, assume a defensive posture, or keep moving. So let's watch Ashley in real time. Thanks for watching. One response to collar grabs. Uh, before we even start into responses to collar grabs, let's uh, make a very important point. If she just stands there and allows me to wrap my fingers and get them ingrained in her uniform, this makes the job of separating us much, much more difficult. Ideally, she would respond here rather than waiting until I'm all uh, wrapped up in her collars. However, you never know uh, you never know what you're going to get. Maybe you're against the wall. Maybe you don't have time. Maybe the person's being friendly at first and then escalates and ends up grabbing your collars. God only knows what will happen during a self-defense conflict. But uh, uh, one option that you have is to remember to salute the flag. So if the, the hand on this side, you grab with this arm. The hand that's on this side, you grab with this arm. 
right? So that way you have some place to go when you pull when you pull the wrist off. So as I'm going for Ashley, before I can establish a grip, she's going to grab that hand and turn it over this way. She can also uh, put in some little uh, spices. Once she does that, she can ignores this hand, by the way. She just lets this hand have it. She reaches over here. Now, as this elbow bends, she can bring this arm up and hit me in the face with my own elbow, which completely knocks me off balance. And again, if you tell somebody, hey, grab my collars, I'm going to get away from you, of course they're going to do something to resist. If they couldn't, they'd be uh, uh, idiots. So the idea here is to use strategy. The person has no idea you're going to do anything. You don't wait until they're wrapped in your collars and ingrained before you respond. You respond here, fast, explosive, and then, of course, you assume a fighting stance or you run and get away. So let's watch Ashley in real time. Very nice. Thank you for watching. All right, we're close to the ground for this one. Um, I don't uh, pretend to know a lot of jujitsu. I think it's a great art. However, I don't think it's a great art for offense. To me, the last place you want to be is um, on the ground when you're trying to uh, defend yourself, or rather for defense, rather, I apologize. For offense, it's a great art. You take somebody down, choke them out, whatever. Uh, that's wonderful. However, for defense, you never know if, uh, if buddies are going to be introduced to the scenario or knives or guns are going to be introduced to scenario. Maybe you've got a great headlock going on. The guy reaches in his pants, pulls out a gun, and shoots you. Uh, however, I think jujitsu is a, is a, a very important part of anybody's martial arts vocabulary in order to get off the ground because once somebody gets you on the ground now you're tangling and um, and your and your problems could escalate uh, one way to get away from uh, if you've been knocked to the ground and maybe they grab your foot and uh, we always say like pulling you to the kidnapper van or whatever is to roll like an alligator or is it a crocodile or both I don't know alligators will grab you and then they start rolling the bite is bad enough but then they start rolling underwater, and so you're completely disoriented, which kind of happens to the, to the person grabbing his hand. So Ashley gets knocked down, whatever. She's flat on the mat, and the bad guy grabs her by the ankle. Number one, she can take the other foot and start digging in with her heel to my hands, which softens me up. Then she can roll either direction, which makes it very hard for me to hold on. Even if I'm standing up, I've knocked her down, whatever, she's on the ground, I grab her ankle, she starts rolling, very, very difficult to hold on. Then, of course, you want to assume a defensive posture. If you can do a front roll and get up and run, that's all the better. Or a back roll, get up and roll away, uh, wonderful. But that's one way to escape from somebody grabbing your ankle uh, on the ground. Thanks for watching. In the course of teaching self-defense techniques, there are some where you simply get away. And then you've, you've de-escalated the situation and made peace without striking or hurting the other person, which to me, for self-defense, is really good because you haven't escalated the situation. If you punch them back or kick them back, you've opened up a whole new can of worms. Now the guy's pride is hurt or whatever, which sometimes might be necessary. Home invasion or somebody really means to rape you, by all means, hit them. Counterattack, but if it's some pushy person at a party or whatever, you don't want to rob them of their sight just because they were being a knucklehead. You're going to have a hard time explaining to the judge something like that. So, that being said, here's a response to anything where an arm is extended towards you maybe a gun, maybe a knife, maybe a punch, whatever. Maybe they're reaching to grab you, and it, uh, a bad situation has already become worse. So, this is a really um, ballistic, aggressive response to someone reaching out. Let's get a little closer so they can see. She first does an, basically an outside block with this hand and, and at that point acquires a nice grip. Then she brings this hand under. Now she has a hold of my arm and she breaks it right over her shoulder. Now uh, this is of course a crippling move. If someone is reaching to touch your earring or something at a party and they've invaded your space, this is obviously not the correct response. However, uh, you're about to be raped. You know, somebody else is already dead. Maybe they've got a gun pointed at you or whatever. You block it right out of their hand and snap. There goes their arm. And then, of course, uh, somebody on PCP or whatever doesn't respond to pain, even though the 
arm is broken and unmovable at this point, you can also come back with backwards elbow strikes or a kick or whatever, set up a defensive posture or uh, get out of there. Thank you for watching. Knife defense. We have here at the dojo the four rules of knife fighting, which are you will get cut. The idea of those four rules being that if you're going to decide to take on somebody with a knife or to pick up a knife and use it yourself, you must realize that you have drastically increased the chances of yourself getting cut around the dojo. We uh, quite often do drills with a magic marker where the other person's wearing like a painter's suit. And a lot of times the person with the knife ends up with marker on themselves. Or if she's got the red marker and I've got the black marker, I end up with both colors on me and she ends up with both colors on her. That is to say, if you can possibly avoid a knife confrontation, do so. Now, that being said, sometimes your choices are not good and bad. Your choices are bad and worse. You're going to have to fight with the knife, so you might as well have some options, which we will show you now. So the way the anatomy of the hand works is when it bends like this, the fingers tend to come open. When it bends this way, the fingers tend to close. You can try it yourself. Open, close. Pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to capitalize on that physiological phenomenon with the knife disarm. I'm going to stop her wrist from moving simultaneously and get this moved this way. And not only a 90 degree angle, but even an acute angle back toward her. So if I just go straight like this, right, her, her wrist is going to move at a 90 degrees. I want to stop the wrist and then move this one this way, back toward her at a 45 degree angle. And that knocks the knife right out. Then, of course, you follow up with a back fist, whatever. At this point, you're in combat with somebody who has a knife. So you don't just knock it out and stand there. You're ready to do something really quick and take them down. Thank you, Miss Ashley. And thank you for watching. All right, a variation on the video that we had where you stop the wrist and come in at an acute angle this way to bend it. Watch that one if you want to know that one. A permutation of that is to simply block this way and acquire the wrist, and then you hit the, the hand going this way. And again, like we explained on the other video, if I come straight across, it's going to get her wrist at a 90 degree angle, which may or may not uh, release the knife. A lot of times it works. But if I come at this angle toward her at a 45 degree, it puts an extreme bend on her uh, wrist and you stand a lot better chance of getting the knife out. Now, of course, I don't stand here holding her wrist after that, waiting for her to do her next move. I follow up with an elbow or take out her knee or whatever. So in real time, she comes in, I block, knock it out, pow, come back with something else and then split. Thank you for watching. All right, a really Hollywood kind of a knife disarms if you're going to get stabbed right in the jewels. Again, as I explained in the uh, disarm disclaimers, hey, if you can avoid a confrontation with a blade or a gun, do so. It's in your best interest big time. Sometimes you have no option but to respond. So you're stuck. She's here. She's coming up for the, the stab right in the groin. I want to try to stop her wrist before it builds up some momentum. If I try to stop the wrist, go ahead. Here, it's built up a lot of speed by then. I'm just going to jam my thumbs. So as soon as I see her chambering, I try to catch it here before she's even got going good. And the, if her right arm, then I want my left arm on the bottom. And I grab a hold and come underneath. And now I point the knife at myself, at which point I can just flip it right away, break her arm, come back with whatever. It's a knife fight at this point, so you don't just stand in there holding her hand. Thanks for watching. Okay, we just did a video a while ago on what to do if somebody's coming from underneath with a stab, and Ashley's going to show you a permutation. What we did a while ago is uh, disarm the knife. Another option you have is to sadly make the person stabbing you stab themselves. So she blocks before my inertia gets going. She comes under my arm and then right into my body like that. And then you leave him laying there. Let's look at it from the other side. Again, she doesn't want to stop the arm when it's here. I built up a lot of momentum by then. It's going to do nothing but jam her fingers or her thumbs. So what she does is as soon as she sees me chambering, she comes in here and stops it before it's even going. Also note that the arm on the same side of the body goes down. 
So with my right arm coming, her left arm is down. That makes it a little easier to handle. She steps underneath and right into it. And then, of course, she takes off. Now, will this always work? Of course not. Nothing will always work. If there was one martial arts technique to which there were no counters and which always worked, some country would have taken this technique and would now rule the world. Think about it. And thanks for watching. Knife defenses number, what is this, 876, I believe. So here's a response to the psycho stat. I'm coming straight down. Um, this one is, is really probably better for a taller defender than a shorter defender. If the attacker is taller, the problem with this is I've got a lot of time to get up a lot of momentum by the time she can block. My hand's already straight down. Whereas if you're taller than your attacker, you can stop them before the hand really gets on its way. And, and so I'll do this one, actually. So after I've stopped it, I come underneath this way, grab a hold of her here, and make sure I push her, her elbow toward her, um, toward her head to make sure there's always tension on that elbow. She can still do it, though. You can still do it. Uh, she would just need to come in uh, low and come in really quick to try to stop me before I got a lot of momentum. She comes up underneath. Whoa! Yes. Okay, I take back what I said about the shorter attacker, okay? Thanks for watching. Gun defense. Oh, my Lord, at the criticism we've received from gun disarms. People uh, tend to want to think that the gun is the end-all, be-all. If you have this magic instrument, you are, what do you call it when you can't beat somebody? Invincible. You are invincible. Maybe you could cut that out. That looks good. <laughs> you are not invincible, in fact, with a gun. Guns uh, jam. Guns run out of bullets. People on PCP and crack will take 16 bullets to the body cavity and still keep coming. Of course, they're going to die two days later, but after they beat your face into a pulp with a lamp or something. So, um, uh, as we usually say, combat is the last alternative. Whether or not you have a gun, whether or not you have a knife, whether or not you're the biggest, it's the last alternative, and it is not without repercussions. She might have a boyfriend, a gang member, a parent, and even if I win this little battle, I'm going to be looking over my shoulder for the rest of my life. That being said, sometimes your options are not good and bad, but bad or worse. That being said, enjoy the gun disarms. Okay. All right, let's go for a really simple one first. And let's talk about a little strategy also. If somebody has a nice modified weaver stance with their knees bent and they're, and they're really covering you, at this point, you comply. This person probably knows what they're doing and they're not going to let me get this close in the first place. If I'm back here and she's standing like that, I'm not going to get this gun away. It's not a good strategy. And so you try to create an opening uh, that will work. It's much, you can do things from this, from this position, but it's much more difficult. If the person does not know what they're doing and they have one hand, it makes a disarm like this much easier. And then, of course, I hold the gun correctly, yes, so that she can't do the same thing back to me. By the way, when you're practicing, I like to keep my finger out the trigger and keep the gun pointed in a safe direction, even if it's a dummy gun. Now, let's look at the anatomy of this technique and see how it works. Just like we described with the knife defense, when the hand moves this way, the fingers tend to open. When it moves this way, the fingers tend to close, just because of the tension of these tendons and the extensor tendons here. So, I'm guarding the wrist from bending, and I'm moving this hand as far this way as I can, and then coming over the top, where it pries right out of her fingers. She's being nice and opening her fingers. She's also trying to preserve the skin on the surface of her fingers. But if you'll go ahead and grip one time, even with a hard grip, it peels right out of there from right there between her fingers. Now, at that point, you want to grab the gun, seat the magazine in case it's come loose during all this um, manipulation, and then rack the slide. Maybe it was locked. I mean, maybe it was loaded. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's broken. Maybe it wasn't. Uh, who knows? Maybe there's one in the chamber already. You never can know that. So you rack it anyway, so you waste one round. You find out if it's loaded or not, whatever. So if you're going to use the other person's gun, you pack the magazine, rack the slide. One more time. You try to find an opportune moment to uh, take the gun. Like, I love what you've done with your hair. And then pack the magazine, rack the slide, get the gun in a safe position, 
with a finger off the trigger, and now you're in charge of the weapon. Thank you for watching.